The second key trend is the pace and rate of innovation. We're going to have to innovate our products quicker in order to keep up with changing customer demand. We've been conditioned that every year there's going to be a latest mobile or smartphone that comes out. Every two years, a facelift on a vehicle. Fashion's changed three or four times a year across the different seasons. You've got, now got companies such as Apple, as Apple this year that have quite clearly got into the pattern of quarterly product releases, product launches for their different aspects of their product range. There are many companies out there across the global marketplace that are bringing to the market new or updated products on a quarterly basis. We need to keep up. We need to keep it ahead. And if we're not, somebody else will be by overtaking us in, in the industry. So uh, long has been the time about this whole concept about rapid prototyping and with the advent of 3D printers uh, growing, you know, you can 3D print parts of construction, parts of buildings. Um, in the US, you can go into your own staple store and you can buy a 3D printer. They can 3D print or use additive manufacturers, it's also known, body parts, replacement body parts. The latest Airbus aircraft has 1,000 components in it that have been made by 3D printing, by additive manufacturing. And one of my clients is a professional additive manufacturing organization, and they 3D print the exhaust systems for one of the Formula One teams. It's phenomenal, absolutely phenomenal, the pace and the way that technology is going. So we can go to prototypes a lot quicker with ideas. But there's a gentleman that attended this event in Norwich, and he's gone a stage further than that. His business is providing uh, soap shampoo bottles to, uh, and hand soap, soap, dispenser, soap dispenser bottles to companies like Boots. He's got a holographic projector, and he can sit in the, with the buyers from Boots around a meeting room table with a holographic projector and the software, the CAD software on his laptop, and he can project a real like 3D image of not only the bottle, but the label, the colouring, the design, the wording on that label. And the designers and the marketeers at Boots can go, actually, could you just change the shape there? I'm not quite so sure about that colour. Can we change the hue of that colour? Or actually, um, we just want to change some of those words. That, can you just switch that design around a bit? And he can do it there and then and get sign off there and then and go straight to production. Speed stunts. So we want to be able to get our product or our service to market quicker, but we also have to constantly be innovating. Okay, in the UK now, we're in, we are in, incentivized through R and D tax credits in order so that we can deliver, you know, invest more of our time, energy and money back into research and development. But gone are the days where a product would be fit for years. You know, when I did my, started to work with BAE Systems a number of years ago, you know, with a military aircraft division as it was known then, you'd have an aircraft that would have a lifespan of 25, 30 years. The world is changing at such a faster pace now that we've got to be innovating every three, six months in terms of our product and our services. The third point is there are going to be shifts in business culture as well. You know, we demand, we're fed up of hypes and scandals and insincerity. We want authenticity. Authenticity is attractive. What, what we did desire, and actually one of our brands and our brand strengths online in the online space is going to be the degree to which we are open. And I mean radically open. The more we can be open and radically open, the more we're going to come across as being the real deal, as genuine as possible, and people are going to trust and buy into us. Authenticity is attractive. There's a guy, it's, uh, I'm, I'm, I'm really getting back into actually, a, a, not listened to them for a while because I've been listening to a lot of audio books, but I'm getting back into podcasts at the moment. And there's a brilliant podcast in the space of entrepreneurs called Entrepreneur on Fire by a guy called John Ledumas, Entrepreneur on Fire. And every month, John Ledumas reports, he publishes what he made last month. That's not normal. In the UK, we do our very best to produce as little information every year to companies' houses as we possibly can get away with. And he's saying every single month, hey, this is what I did last month. This is how much I earned last month. Now, granted, part of his business is teaching people how they can make money through podcasting. So it's in his interest to tell people how well he's doing. But it's indicative of this level of openness that the marketplace is demanding. And that level of openness is also linked to the point I've already made about the importance of purpose. That people, whether they be prospective and current employees, or whether they be prospective or current customers, want to line, line up behind a business that's up to something, that's wanting to deliver on that purpose. 
I love this quote. It comes from a guy called Yannick Silva. He's an online entrepreneur, and every year he pulls a group of uh, entrepreneurs together. He calls it Mavericks, and they do weird and wacky, wonderful things as they spend time brainstorming and masterminding together. And they spend a week on Necker Island with Sir Richard Branson. Now, you can join them if you'd like. It's just a mere 40,000 US dollars for the privilege of spending a week on Necker Island with them. But just you think about it, just think about the quality and the caliber of ideas that you're going to get around the campfire with someone like Sir Richard Branson. Because we become who we hang out with. If we hang out with someone that's worth 100,000, we get 100,000 pound ideas. If we hang out with somebody that's worth a million, we get a million pound ideas. If we hang out with someone that's worth 100 million, we get 100 million idea, pound ideas and strategies. So we want to hang out with people that are really going to lift and shift our thinking. We become who we hang out with. So the quote, 21st, company, 21st century companies align purpose, passion, and profits to create fierce brand loyalty and market leadership. Fierce brand loyalty. We don't see a lot of that, do we, in today's marketplace? And yet, when there's the alignment of purpose and passion and profits, we can achieve that. Culture's changing in organizations as well. This long gone are the days where this cartoon was the, was the case. Hey, you should be lucky you've got a job. People are coming to work for a, for, for a business for as they want to because they choose to, and then if it doesn't fit, they're going to go and work somewhere else. So we're going to have to do more to attract, to keep really good quality staff. So Virgin, actively encouraging career sabbaticals. Some organizations saying it's okay to have a certain number of duvet days in the year. Um, so you and I may have a view about what that might do to productivity, but certain organizations said, hey, if you don't feel like coming in today, you can, you can just take one of your duvet, duvet days. There was a guy in Swansea last week who said to his whole team, you can have unlimited holidays, unlimited unpaid. You have a normal holiday allotment, but you can take unlimited unpaid holidays. And I went, whoa, how's that working for you? He said, do you know what, really well, nobody's abusing that, morale's gone up, productivity's gone up, the level of uh, sort of uh, happiness and contentment and fulfillment in the workforce is, is high and, and it's saving us a heck of a lot of money in recruitment. Heck of a lot of money in recruitment. 